Hi, my name is Charlie Morris, and I'm just 25 days out of anterior cervical disc fusion surgery, ACDF. In my case, I had C5, C6 fused, and I've seen many videos on YouTube of people sharing their recovery experience. In each case, I seem to learn a little bit more um, than I knew before, so I decided to write down a few of my experiences and thoughts and fears that I'm going through as I recover from ACDF surgery. I'm going to break this talk down into sections. Um, an introduction. Who am I? Um, what led me to the decision to have surgery? My pre-op experience, my po the operation, and my post-op experience to date. And so, an introduction. Well, first please know I'm not a doctor, and you need to follow your doctor's advice. I'm only an engineer sharing the experiences that I've gone through. My name is Charlie, and I'm a 58-year-old mechanical engineer. I love to bicycle, and I love to fly fish, and I love to snowboard. And this isn't my first back surgery. Around 10 years ago, I had issues with my lower back, and I had a discectomy on my L5-S1 vertebrae. The surgery back then was a great success and I've been able to do all of the things I love to do since then. So what led to my decision to choose ACDF? Now around three years ago I started having rather severe neck pain radiating down my left arm with a tingling in my index finger and thumb, um, my forefinger excuse me, and thumb. I had an MRI and I consulted with several surgeons. Now, I'm going to make the long story short, but ultimately, I consulted with three surgeons and one postdoc, two doctors that administered steroid shots, and two radiologists. Of the three surgeons, none of them had the same diagnosis reading the same MRI. Now, how does that happen? One said I had a synovial cyst. One said I had a bulging disc. And the other said, I had stenosis, which is narrowing of the, the exit at the nerve root. All of the non-surgeons, that would be the two doctors that gave me the steroid shots and the two radiologists, were in agreement that I had a synovial cyst. And I guess it's worth mentioning, by the way, that the postdoc also said I had a synovial cyst. So this leads me to the first bit of advice. Get three opinions. Do your research. The decision you're about to make is a big deal. And <clears throat> you need to make sure you understand what's about to happen. Now, I went through physical therapy and I tried traction and I had steroid shots and nothing, and I mean nothing, did any good. And when I finally was about to make the decision to have surgery three years ago, the pain went away. Not completely, but at a low enough level that I could live with it. So, um, I stayed that way for a little over a year, and the pain came back and it came back with a vengeance. And I went through severe sleep deprivation and my GP put me on opioids and Valium. I got back into the surgeon quickly and we tried steroid shots again and again, no effect. So it was at this point I scheduled the surgery. And when I tried, um, we then, at my surgeon's advice, tried a nerve root ablation and the results were phenomenal. My pain dropped to less than one, and I was able to get off the pain meds and the sleeping pills. And in my case, remember I had the surgery scheduled about three months out. Well, my pre-op experience. My surgery was scheduled around 10 to 12 weeks out, and four weeks prior to the surgery, I was scheduled for the pre-op with my surgeon. While the ablation had been very successful and the pain was but the pain, the pain was starting to return. And so I made the call 
to continue with the the idea of having surgery. At the time of my pre-op appointment, I also scheduled a fitting for a neck brace. I've received two neck braces, the one that you see that I'm wearing, and the second is the waterproof neck brace that uh, I use for taking a shower. I was told to bring my neck brace with me to surgery and I received a few instructions. One, I gave up all NSAIDs uh, two weeks prior to surgery. That includes aspirin, naproxen sodium, Aleve, and ibuprofen, Advil and Motrin. Um, I was told to change the sheets in the bedding every day, three days prior to surgery. And I was told that when I showered to use antibacterial soap three days prior to surgery. I was told to use clean washcloths and fresh towels every day three days prior to surgery. And of course, there's the eating and drinking instructions prior to surgery, my operation. Well, my operation took about two and a half hours. The surgery was scheduled at 7 a.m. I arrived at 5.30 and was checked in. When I woke up after uh, the surgery, I had the neck very on. My throat was a little bit sore, but not really like a bad cold or strep. It was more like a physical soreness. Um, one surprise that was mentioned in another YouTube, that was, and that was my forehead was a bit greasy and it was sore where all these electrodes had been attached for monitoring my brain activity. Also worth noting, I had electrodes on various parts of my body. The first time I needed to go pee, I was able to walk to the bathroom with some assistance. And uh, so my next content comment is aimed towards men. So we pee standing up, but you can't tip your head down to aim. And I got to where I would bump the toilet with my leg so I had a rough idea where things were, and then you're just flying blind. And so it was a little harder than I thought. Now I know there's some have people that have mentioned they've gone home the same day, and I'm gonna tell you, I can't imagine it. Um, I, was, uh, I was out of it, and I was very grateful for the care and attention provided to me by the medical staff. Everyone was great, and I'm gonna tell you, after the surgery, I needed the care. Everyone stressed that I should stay ahead of the pain, and this is advice that I took to heart. I was put on a regimen of Oxycontin and Tylenol, and around 4 p.m. that afternoon, I decided to have something to eat. I chose chicken noodle soup and Jello. I was steered this direction by a nurse who warned me that anything too rich might make me nauseous and I should start out a bit slow. The soup at the hospital was terrible. It didn't have a grain of salt in it. And that day, a close friend of mine came to visit me and brought me a uh, chocolate shake from Goldstone. And I'm telling you, I've never had anything so good in my life. I drank the whole thing. Now, do you remember that nurse that tar told me to start out slow? Well. Three hours later, I was so nauseous, I don't have the words to describe how sick I felt. I was given two anti-nausea drugs before the sickness finally started to subside. And so my second bit of advice is be careful what you eat after surgery. Various staff came in later that day and discussed home care, things I, had, I couldn't do, and my physical limitations. I checked out of the hospital around 3 p.m. the day after surgery. And so here's my post-op experience to date. As of this recording, I'm two days shy of four weeks for the post-surgery. As you can see, I'm still in a neck brace. My post-operative follow-up with my surgeon is ske was scheduled six weeks after the surgery, and my doctor has ordered me to be in the neck brace the whole time. For all the YouTubers I've watched, six weeks seems to be just about the longest period that somebody's been in a neck brace. And everybody talks about their scars. And while I was kind of excited about having a really cool scar, mine just
just kind of another wrinkle on my chin. So immediately after I got home, I struggled between the balance between nausea and pain. The Oxycontin made me very nauseous, and to be quite honest, the pain really wasn't too bad. It wasn't bad at all. So I was on pain meds for around five days after surgery. A side effect of the painkillers, by the way, is constipation. So plan on taking Metamucil, Psyllium, and eating prunes. Weight. In one video, a young woman talked about her weight gain, and this is actually was a problem for me, not because of the surgery or the post, but prior to, I'm a cyclist, I love the bicycle, and I gained a lot of weight. It's also worth mentioning that initially I had trouble sleeping and was given Ambien. My sleeps were so deep when I wake up to go pee, I had difficulty walking to the bathroom. Um, I'm off the Ambien now, I'm off all meds, and so I was put on vitamin supplements, calcium, vitamin C, vitamin D3. I'm limited to carrying 10 pounds or less, and I've been told not to do house cleaning, yard work, no doing dishes, laundry, or vacuuming. Vacuuming. The only exercise I can do is walk, and that's what I do. During the first week after surgery, I limited my walk to about three miles a day, and since then, I upped my distance to around four to seven miles a day. I left my shoulder, oh, I, I find my left shoulder gets kind of tired as the day goes on. Often, I get an itch um, under my, my shoulder blade, and sometimes it gets a bit worse, kind of like there's a screwdriver poking me right there. Swallowing a pill, even now, four weeks after surgery, is difficult. I grind up my vitamin supplements and take them with a teaspoon of peanut butter. So in closing, there are many questions on my mind, and so here are the questions that I'm going to pose to my doc and to the YouTubers out there. So please leave your comments. So for my doctor, is there strengthening of my neck muscles? Is there something I could do to keep this from happening again? To the YouTubers, did you go through physical therapy? Um, what was your regimen, and, and what did it consist of? To the YouTubers, what what exercises did the doctor recommend for you? Reps, number of sets. To my doctor, are there habitual changes that I can make in my posture? Can I implement, uh, that I can implement to reduce this from happening to me again? And so I'm gonna cut this kind of short and say, <coughs> I'll do another video <coughs> after my six week follow up with my surgeon. And there's one last thing, and maybe the most important question on your mind if you're considering this surgery. Would I do it again? At this point, I'd have to say, yes, I would do it again. I was in so much pain, I couldn't sleep. I'm just grateful that I live in a time and a place where the surgery was an option. The other thing I can tell you is you can wait too long. I avoided surgery on my lower back so long that I have permanent leg damage, and my left leg is significantly weaker than my right. So if you don't mind, leave your comments, the answers to, your, to the questions that I've asked, or by the way, questions that you want to know that I haven't answered in, in the YouTube. I, I hope you the best, and I'll let you know how things go for me about two and a half weeks when I have my six-week post-op. Post